Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. My name is Abe Hunter, and I'm the founder of the Leet Society, and I'm here with my, at, a, at the ungodly hour of 9 a.m. <laughs> 9 a.m. for you, Abe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've had an extra hour. Oh, wait, no, you're in, you're in the past, or the future. Whatever I mean, it is. who cares? <laughs> um, it's too early for me to do anything complex right. right now. Richard, how are things down in sunny Florida? Sunny. I mean, since we're doing this in the day hours, it actually is sunny. Well, I um, always keep my drapes drawn no matter what, so I don't know what year it is, actually. I mean, hey, we can always go after this, like, Miss Havisham style of living. <laughs> like, who cares? <laughs> Richard, would you be so kind as to introduce our guest? Yes, um, I'm so excited today. We have a wonderful friend, colleague, alum of the Lyric Opera of Chicago's Ryan Opera Center and 2019 card of B BBC card of singer of the world, Ming Jie Lei. Hello. <laughs> That's Hi, our studio everyone. audience. You, we got them. We got them up extra early for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's my honor to be here and sending you my greetings from Stuttgart, Germany. Oh, Stuttgart. Yeah. Mm. Which is why we have to do it at this like hour because you know, <laughs> time difference and but that's a, the beauty of even in pandemic times like of having Zoom conversations. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. Absolutely, thankful technology bring us still together. Mm -hmm. So Ming Jie, like you said, um, you're in Stuttgart, and if you've been really fortunate that um, you're a member of the ensemble there for at the Schatzoper, and you've been able to still have a little work and you know Germany's been doing pretty well like have you been keeping yourself busy in these past several months well uh thank you for the question and I am very fortunate I mean this is my third season with the company in Stuttgart here and we had our started our light lockdown since November 1st until now we just extend to March something and before that we were performing with a, a corona um, restriction way with audience but since November, I had no performance in sitting at home. And I get a chance to actually take time to prepare my next season roles or assignments later and read a lot. I think it's, well, under the unfortunate circumstance, we're mm -hmm. fortunate to be, you know, have time for ourselves for our history. Yes. And uh, I'm going to have to give you some props because uh, we were talking earlier this week and I would say you're maybe one of our only guests who was able to identify the the roundtable's theme music but without even being asked you were yeah. the first one to be like oh i love that song N normally what happens is was when ba -ba -da 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 happens like mm -hmm. 20 times about the 19th time they go <gasps> but you you were just right there you i, I loved it thank you for that most people think it's happy birthday Oh no, no. It's, it's, it, the Schoenemüllerin has a very special place in my heart. And once I hear the halt, okay, something halt me. So I was like, okay, that's something rings <laughs> out to me. <laughs> Why, so is halt? Clearly, Why did you choose the halt? The reason being, so I was, I wanted a um, sort of catchy tune. And I love the um, theme song to um, the Johnny Carson show. So I was looking at those chords. And all of a sudden it came to me, Halt has the same, you could overlay the, the melody on top of those chords and it works. It Wonderful. Just, I, I like I'm a beautiful mind. <laughs> I, I mean, I that, that, that's your legacy, Abe. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, for, um, for most of our audience, shame on them if they don't know who you are, but um, just to give them a little taste, we have a, a clip from when you competed for Neue Schimmen in, in 2017. And this is a, a selection you sang for them from um, Abduction from the Seraglio. And we can all enjoy that beautiful woodwind introduction mm -hmm. from the morning. Uh. L lull me into it. Here we go.
Thank you. 
sublime. <clears throat> Thank you. Now, you guys have attention to me when I just listen to this. Like, oh my god. This Bring back all the memories, right? How, how do you <laughs> absolutely? How, how do you make that sound so easy? That's such a difficult aria. I mean, all Mozart is so difficult to sing, and you're so exposed, but you sang it just effortlessly. Oh, you are very, very kind. Thank you so much. I'm actually I was not. I'm, I, I'm an awful human moment. being. I can hear my own heartbeat for every single note. <laughs> Too many black notes. <laughs> no, but in, in all honesty, Mingjay, something that I've always really, um, I've really attributed to you is how expressive you are, not just vocally, but like, you know, visually, like you are able to transport an audience into the exact same like headspace that you are when you sing this. <laughs> and I don't know if a lot of people know this is that you actually have a musical theater background. Do we have to bring that up? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm not the one who did a national tour of Rent. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no, let's were not you, talk about that, you but me, I do. Uh, we are coming from a music lovers of the entire family and we got influenced by Western culture when I was my very young. So I am very interested to the musical theater zone and I got influenced from it. And it's, I have to benefit from, to, from it very well into the opera scene as well. I mean, Abe, just for your own knowledge, he sings a mad Pippin, if you ever want the opportunity. All right, I'm producing um, it, come to town. <laughs> No, but in, in, in all seriousness, Mingja, I feel like your ability to connect emotionally to music and translate that for an audience has been a huge like gift for you. I mean, that's for me as a as a third person to say it's your gift. No, but I, I really have always admired that in your performances. And um I don't I don't know, like how how do you feel when trying to connect with an audience? Well, I have to thank Craig Terry on this. I mean, I always had this, like, uh, I know I have the same feeling really close to the music, but I haven't been able to try it out how, for, how, how much you should give to audience and not be bothered. Hmm. And so thanks Craig Terry, we tried many possibilities. My time in the Ryan Center, we tried the musical theater, we tried Chinese songs, we tried Schubert, we tried Liszt, we tried all, all, all of them. and. He kind of like pushed me a little outside my comfort zone to be able to try different levels of communication. And I benefit from that, I have to say. I'm not, my, my, my first myself is not that <laughs> willing to talk things. <laughs> no worries. Um, and something that's, I think, really special about your specific perspective is how international it actually is. You were born and raised in China. You did your collegiate studies in the U.S. You are now performing and working in Germany. Do you feel that that kind of communication is universal or do you feel like you have to kind of adjust culturally to where the audience is? Well, that I would say that depends on the repertoire you're saying. Mm -hmm. And for the most operatic repertoire and some, we actually perform mostly to Western uh, style or Western cultural music to it. And it, it is universal because where I would go in the States or in Europe, it is from there and developed here. So I think it's definitely international. But for me, it's like uh, I had to adjust myself to the way of European language or English, you know, to different method of thinking inside of my mind to how how do I speak this word because without a explanation just we talk like just simple example if I say like how you doing to a Chinese friend people say I'm doing fine but if you say it to a friend tv show mm -hmm. fan you say okay that's from Joey <laughs> it's, it, can mean, it can mean total different things mm -hmm. <laughs> so to me it's like I need to do a lot of homework before I go out to present an all Western program. So it, I think like the gap is not that much because the feeling is the same. It's just the only the way how you tell the story are slightly different, like how many percentage you give, I think. And I think you're right that context is everything depending on how you're saying a phrase, like how you doing, it's true. Like it can be interpreted in many ways, but 
again, what I applaud you for is being able to, as you said, like do the homework because I think it's paid off for you clearly. Like you've been able to really take it far. And I, you know, I've had the pleasure of seeing you perform in Chicago. I, I saw you perform um, for the, the audiences in Cardiff and everywhere you go, people just love you and rightfully so. <laughs> There's, there's something that you accomplish in your performances that I think is very um, admirable. And I think a lot of people should kind of take a look at how how the Ming, how Ming Jay performs is a very good method to connect with an audience. And um, Well, Richard, there are many hearts and um, comments with regard to that on, on our Facebook. Um, oh, people so are awake? People are awake, believe it or not. <laughs> Well, most of them are old, so I don't. I'm not surprised. Um, <laughs> I don't know who it is, so I'm not calling you out on your age. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I, I love answering hate mail. Uh, <laughs> but uh, just fantastic work. I mean, it's beautiful. Do you? So, Thank you. have you? Have you? Um, just is your German like impeccable now that you have been spending some time there? Well, not at all. I'm good enough to buy my bread and beer. Ein um, beer if you, go a, if you go more specific, <laughs> if we're talking about the vaccine nation or now, I'll get a, oh, I'll put a pause on that. <laughs> I, I got very good at saying, Ein beer bitte. Sehr gut. <laughs> that's all, that's all you need. That's all I needed exactly. for my three months in Austria. You can say, Ein beer bitte and noch einmal. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, you should yeah, learn your yeah. German properly. Sorry, I'm not trying to spread the wrong message. You should learn your German properly. As we know, like, where, whatever country you're in, know the basics. Like, I need help. Where do I go? Can I get a beer? Yeah. <laughs> you can go anywhere. I was thinking about it. We should probably write a song about it. So, you know, it's an easy way to learn your German. <laughs> or Chinese. There you go. There you go. You just have different applications. Hey, if, if you need a project to make some money, Mingjie, you can just make a composition and do several translations, and then I'm sure you'll have a lot of buyers. <laughs> we got our platform here in the Lean Society. Right. <laughs> we'll take the royalties. Yep. But, uh, <laughs> but um, so something that I think is really important, like that you've been able to accomplish, Mingjie, is, like I said, having this multicultural exposure um that as you said whether it be in performances through like western like classical art song opera through musical theater through chinese song anything like that i feel that your your you know how do i say your toolbox for the arts is really expansive i think a lot of us singers pianists like any artist when you can try to expose yourself to as many options, it's like, okay, like, you know, a French style, a German style, a Spanish style, like what connects and what can I present to an audience? And I feel like you have so much to offer that, um, do you try, we were talking about this uh, uh, earlier this week, when putting together a program, um, how do you feel like, depending on the audience, depending on where you are, how diverse a program can be. I know we had talked about like, do you set Schöne Müllerin for an entire program? Sure. Or do you offer up a little bit of this, a little bit of that, especially for Western audiences who may not be so used to hearing um, Asian art song or like, you know, Chinese folk song. Like, how do you feel uh, in programming all of that experience kind of ties in? Well, uh, it is a very big question, but I have to say, I, I thank all my colleagues or teachers or friends around me. I learned so, so much from all of you. It's not, I have this tool, but I learn from you guys. I had about the environment, I was very fortunate. And the also, and thanks to the platform like this, or BBC Carve Singer of the World, we got a chance to share different, the, the diversity of cultural music ones. And it is, difficult. First of all, we need a platform, not only online. We need a setting, uh, a music venue to offer you to do a recital by yourself. And you have to know your audience, like where is this place going to take place? 
And if you do it in China, you can do all kinds of stuff, but it has to be something understandable to Chinese culture. If you sing in the States, I would think like musical theater choices will be really popular. But if you're doing Austria, Schubert, Mozart, it's their native. They have very personal, close like connection to it. So it's always a mixture. It depends on how many per percentage of the each cultural takes entire program. But for me, it's like, I found it quite um, difficult because every song is a testament in the program setting. You have to give the first set a try, see how they react to you and see mm -hmm. if you go further or you have to hold it back. True. It, it's it, even it's exactly the same program. I, I get a feeling it's like every single night, it can be a very different show because in, a, in just a song, a song evening, you don't have a set, you don't have costume, you're not in lighting, you're not makeup. You kind of have freedom to create whole production, but based on the reaction to the audience. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think? No, I, do you think of that? It's. It's. I think you're right on that. You can offer, like you said, like the exact same program, and from night to night, it can feel totally different. And so, you know, as artists, you have to kind of rely on what works what doesn't what do i believe in and so even if i didn't get that like high reaction from one audience to the another to the next that maybe you just still do it and um something that we've mentioned on the show with other guests is this idea of not forcing a certain culture or art form on an audience but educating and i especially we've talked about this in like the plight in the in the united states right now with a lack of government support in the arts and quite honestly, a lack of musical education in, in um, schools that we are kind of not suffering, but we're, we're kind of reduced to just what is directly in front of us as opposed to being a curious kind of culture and society where we're saying, oh, I want to research this before seeing this. Um, you and I were talking about this before the show that in presenting a program, especially of something that may be uncommon or unfamiliar, do we actually set it up in the program? Do we actually say, this is something you have not heard before, let me explain it to you. And, and then you run into the question of how much time do you devote to an explanation versus the actual performance. But uh, I forget who we had on the show where they had said, it's the duty of musicians now to kind of become educators for an audience to kind of explain like, this is why this is important. And um, in a way, like, you know, especially I, you and I were talking when we're talking about like a multicultural approach to the arts and especially to like Western style music, that exposure is everything. And especially like where we are today in the United States, like we're trying to actually show how diverse this country actually is, how multicultural it actually is. And it, through music, why not? And um, I don't know, me, me personally, this is just my opinion. I would love to hear more music that I haven't heard before. I remember um, when we were in Cardiff and like in Chicago, you had said like, you know, presenting some Chinese song. I think it's important to hear like what else is going on in the world because sometimes we can get sucked into our usual Schubert, Mozart, you know, Beethoven. It's like, they're great. And um, I think I had said this on the show recently, it's just like, when it comes to Mozart and Schubert in context of a program, they don't need your help. People are gonna program them no matter what because they're the masters and we all revere them for that. But bringing in different voices and um, and that's what I always found like so unique with, um, you know, with a lot of foreigners who come to the States, study there and share that with us. So I, as much as you say, like, you know, you learn from your colleagues and everything, well, we learn from you. <laughs> Thank you. I think um, I've been thinking about this question since it's pandemic sitting at home. I've been thinking a lot about industry. Yes, I agree. Like it is a needed educational level to be able to get feel connected to the certain music. It's not something you can pick up right away. You need sure. to do a little bit of homework before you come to a recital. And so that's about the repertoire choice. I get feelings like, uh, you know, it's Chinese New Year just the past two weeks. So it's become a hit 
there is a Chinese new composed song about the city was developed of Shenzhen. It was developed for the past 30 years. And it's sung by a very uh, well-known Chinese uh, folk song singer Zhang Ye and another opera singer, um, Zhou Shen. They sing it as a duo. It's a Western style of singing plus Chinese local singing. And that song become a hit. In our news feed in WeChat or TikTok, it went viral for two weeks straight. It's about like, it's not a entry. Uh, I found I found I learned from that piece. It's not about like that we need to require to like be educational to about that. It's about the repertoire choice. If it's a familiar tomb like the Schönermüllerin, something will ring the bell like right away. And it's you don't have to be that professional. To, but singing, it's another story. But I think I learned from the Chinese the New Year's gala things like you have to very uh careful how you introduce the song hmm. you have to compromise a little to your audience you have to um you you need like find your moments that spark moment you have to find it and you have to make sure it sparks every single time and yeah <clears throat> now um myra huang um is listening and she'd like us oh, yeah. how, how can we find that link for the song or can you share it with us or send it to me and i'll post it in the comments and i'm then, happy to let me find on my and then also for the rest of the show could you show me how to use tiktok <laughs> how much time do we have we, we've got you know the tiktok minutes. you know there's two different companies of tiktok you know it's tiktok overseas and tiktok china mm -hmm. i just want i just need i just need a general uh, um layman's <laughs> tutorial <course>. tutorial <laughs> We have 29 minutes. <laughs> we'll have an all like TikTok episode one of these days. <laughs> it'll just be it'll just be um, people showing me how to use it and me being a fool. <laughs> but so I, I mean... re reply to your email. See if you. All right. Myra will. I'm getting. See, Myra, you ans you ask and I I just do whatever you say. <laughs> you're the Oprah. You're the Oprah piano. I just do here to you, provide. I just do as you tell me. Whatever you would like, Miss Myra. So, so DJ, basically, you become the whole entire community. Like my mom, my all my relatives. They're not professional singers. They are all uploading. They're sending the part of the highlights. You know, the reframe up to TikTok. It's like okay, it's not a context. It's just about joy who share during the Chinese New Year. Yes. I think maybe we can do inspire me. Maybe I should sing a couple of songs like that, you know? Maybe I should join them. Maybe. I mean, um, you know, like speaking of uh, Cardiff 2019, I mean, by by the way, for everyone, 2021, this year, is actually supposed to be the next Cardiff. So, you know, they've been working really hard, as far as I know, about making sure that even through the pandemic, they're able to provide the competition some platform. So here's to hoping that they're able to do that. But with mentioning that um, we had Julian von Mellertz, um, who was with us in Cardiff in 19, that when the lockdown was really intense for them in London, he and a bunch of other New Zealand singers actually came together and said, we want to present a an entire program and series of programs of just New Zealand singers, and even with some um, native New Zealand composers that do you think that, I mean, that for Asian singers in Germany, because I know like certain companies, like it's a huge draw for certain like Korean singers and Chinese singers that there's a a huge base of Asian singers in Germany right now that do you feel like a German audience would be open to that kind of experience of like, this is the music of a different culture? I think just like say, if we explain or we pre-educate our song enough, I think of course they will like be into it. It's always about well, I, o I often offer like cliche Chinese songs, like the songs I offer many places. It's a very simple. It's just all about love at first sight. If we sing the different stories, different art songs about love at first sight from the United States, from China, from Korea, from Japan, I think you don't need a translation to get it anyway. I think I had opportunity like before this pandemic, we had a recital in the opera house in Stuttgart. I tried to sing a couple of Chinese songs. I tested a little how far I can go. And I think 
the basic feeling. Everyone has this feeling. You get the easiest connection right away. If you have to go deeper with a really theological poet or a theory, you need to do more before you sing. True. And I feel like that's always the case. Like when you talk about any cultural like you know presentation that it's the folk songs and like the simple things that are like you said easily translatable you think about the biggest hits for american singers a lot of people gravitate towards the copeland old american folk songs for that exact same reason it's easy to pick up and everybody loves it because it is exactly simple. exactly i forget my feelings like everything every single time you know one of the biggest music of course grammys if the midterm show in the Super Bowl every year. Mm -hmm. You know, people talking about that at the music program is not all, not of course they're fantastic artists. It's about the program they chose, how they use it, how they do every song to transfer. That can be a very big hit. But can you imagine if we have an opera star to go sing there? Of Rita Fleming and Joyce Snow did it, sing, yep. you know, <laughs> the national anthem. But if they can take over the midterm show to do a program with that hit, you know, I think it, we need a platform. And we I, need- well, What about we need TikTok? An, should I download TikTok? <laughs> oh, yes, why not? <laughs> Have you got it yet, Abe? <laughs> no, I'm just pressing the, I just don't even know where to press. <laughs> no, or so we don't want to say this is not an advertisement for TikTok. I know, we're not we, we any sponsorship. <laughs> yet, TikTok, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> we'll gladly take it. I mean, we already have a sponsorship pending with Wendy's, Wendy's because of yeah. Will, so... <laughs> <laughs> but um mm -hmm. so uh, yeah go sorry ahead. continue continue sorry sorry for interrupt continue so, um no i was gonna say so looking forward um you know part of the, like the big project uh that came out of cardiff is like you know let's just say you were the song prize winner of 2019 so props to you and um part of that was if it not were for the pandemic you would have had a work more hall recital and you and I were talking earlier this week that, you know, of course, everything was um, was put on hold. But had you thought of what you were going to program for that recital at Wigmore? I was, yes, I was torn between should I offer a diverse program or I want to present the Shuna Millerland, which I have. It has a very big place in my heart. I always want to sing it. But I don't have the big enough, like, courage or brave enough to try it out yet. I always thought like it's better, it's always a torn between like, should I show who I am or should I show the beauty of this music? You have until, For 20, me, I don't, you have until 2022 mm -hmm. to get it ready. <laughs> I'm preparing for it, we have time. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, you come to come to Minneapolis when, when the when the when the lead um, society puts on its entire like Schubert Song Festival for eight you, days, you can air it out here and then do it do it at um, Wigmore. <laughs> yeah, just Thank try you. it out a couple places. But I, I, you bring up a good topic that I think a lot of artists struggle with, which is how much of yourself do you put into a performance, or do you keep it strictly from the poet's perspective, from the composer's perspective? And I mean, I'll, I'll ask the question: Why not a, a little bit of both? I was thinking because like, I just came out of the Yaris program a couple of years ago. I'm still think I'm taking all of these opportunities, still try to proving the ability, like how much capable I can offer in music in a way. I try to still like express that part took my mind mostly. However, to this music itself, you, you need to pull all of you into this music to tell the entire story. So, if we're not like big, well known enough, people, you often don't come to listen to you offer the original story. But if we only offer the music story and like the Schöne Müllerlin, you need to know the entire story to see the Halt, you know, the Wohin, you know, you, you have to know the storyline enough to come to listen to you, how you interpret it, which, which, which we, I'm, in a way, I'm thankful to this technology stuff, you know, since the pandemic. We get a many chance to hear all, you know, a huge range of musical repertoire. We see all the big names and even like young students, they share their music online. Definitely brought in my repertoire and I do enjoy it. However, I do prefer sing to person, 
still mm-hmm. to test it out in person how how much you give it out and how much you receive it back and should I try even bigger or I can play safe because you have risked yourself in life. It's, it's always crazy. on a fine line between either you're crack it or you're not. Or well, and that's the risk. Know. And that's why we do it, because sometimes you can't always guarantee it's gonna work out. But like you said, it's always that in person live audience reaction that always helps us. But I don't know, maybe this after this pandemic, like we as performers and artists will be bolder to make choices as opposed to waiting for permission we'll just be like there it is whether you like it or not who cares <laughs> but i'll I, I i offered it up well i'll still be here trying to download TikTok. <laughs> still <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch up next week and it will still be trying to TikTok. <laughs> still downloading <laughs> but um you know, just to give people another sampling, we've talked a lot about this uh, idea of Chinese song with audiences and um, how it's received. And I will say we have a wonderful example from the the final round of the song prize in Carta from 2019. And I will let our audience dictate how they feel because definitely the Cardiff audience had their own perspective. So I'll let you be the, the, the deciding factor on that. Yes, audience, please weigh in, be be as uh, brutally honest as you you care to be there is thankfully a happy ending
and just for context, that is a Welsh audience, and they ate you up. Listen, I'm dying. That was so good. Thank you, thank you. I don't even want to access TikTok anymore. <laughs> so, I'm just saying that I'm not, it's not professional feeling it. Every time I hear myself singing, I hear that my heart is collapsed. Oh I my mean, God, hey. no, it was, that was transcendental. Oh no, no, really, Ming Jay. It's everything that we've been talking about on the show. That even without, I, I will ask you to kind of just give us a brief description of the song. But quite honestly, for anyone who sees the video and who can see you, like I said, you emote so well that whether we understand the language or not, we can understand like the feeling, and that's a universality of music. And I think um, that's important that everyone kind of take that on because like you said, the concept of unrequited love is universal. Absolutely, absolutely. This song has also has a big place, special place in my heart. It's one of the most well-known Chinese folk songs in China. Everyone knows it, everyone can sing it. And it's my, actually it's one of my parents' favorites. Mm. I sing it with, actually, I heard this when I growing up. And you don't, you don't, you, you, you like the melody at the first place, but the more when you're growing up, you understand the feeling behind it. You see, you, you listen to this music, you say, wow, that's exactly how I felt last year or a couple of years ago. That's, that's the girl you fall in love right way. And you thought you're not good enough for her. But when you turn around, she's there for you. You know, this is up and down feelings. Like it's just special to share in a universal way. What, it's the same, right? How how old is that tune? I would say like almost over 30 years. <laughs> and so I guess I'm curious, like, would it, would it have been, would it have been performed with traditional instruments? Because obviously that, that piano with that fantastic pianist. Oh, cool. by the way, yeah, Clear <laughs> Williams, <laughs> amazing, amazing. <laughs> uh, that, that, that realization it's... of the harmonies were just so tasteful, but yet, like, I couldn't help but feel hints of Rachmaninoff or you know some of the that those juicy secondary dominant chords that were just like <laughs> ah. That's, a, that's actually a fin fascinating thing about Chinese songs. Like this one, this song's got a famous from the t television series of the exactly the same name on the other side of the river. And when we sing these songs, we got certain freedoms. The pianist, you can improv as long as, long as you know, the harmony is correct. You can play differently every, every single time. It doesn't have to be exactly the comments like this. I choose this one. It's, it's the most one I like it, but there are many, many other versions as long as you feel connect to it, there are many freedom to the pianist. And, and that's the that's the beauty of that kind of simple song. And you could tell that he was taking extreme care to make the text stand out. I have to say, like you know, I every time not only get this like feedbacks from the audience, also from a pianist. You know, there are solos you guys present as a duo. It's a collaboration, how you passing along your music to him and he gave it back to you. It's always this relationship. And I have to say, I sing these songs many times on different occasions, but passing this total, we only rehearsed for once or twice, to passing along to him and he reacts back to you. That was a very special feeling to me back to that moment. Oh yeah, no, I mean, it just speaks to how professional that everyone is like at Cardiff but also it, it, it's a tribute to you like how easily readable you are because I think as I said like language barrier or not I think people understand exactly what the meaning is because you are such a good interpreter. I've been very fortunate at giving this opportunity to be able to do this song in on this platform to let people know about this music repertoire we have a huge amount ego to express to all of, all of the people in the world. It just, I'm very fortunate. I'm the fortunate one, I have to say. They're, <clears throat> listen to you guys have seen, I, we talk about seeing Carter for like a Stephen Moore porn. You know, it just like special. I don't, I don't, I don't know this culture well before I came to the States. I don't still don't know it well either, until now. I'll teach I you about it. it. We'll start with TikTok. <laughs> I'm sorry? We'll start with TikTok. <laughs> I, I said, I'll teach you all TikTok. about it. We'll start with TikTok. <laughs> that's 
that's a fast, easy way. I was thinking about it, like, should we do a channel on TikTok to sing the classic music? But apparently you need like be also be well known enough to spread your song, you know? Well, and, and that's the thing, especially, you know, we talked about this, like what happened with the pandemic with performing is that it kind of equalized all of us because from the, just because we named him before, we're talking about like the Renee Flemings, the Tom Hampsons, and then like us, um, that we're kind of all in the same situation because we all lost work. So <laughs> we're all equally unemployed because of the pandemic, but it also gives a chance for everyone to focus on what's important. And it's always been the artistry and it's always been the music. And as long as we persevere th with that in mind, I think we're, I, I think we all have a, a place. And like I said, like for me personally, I would love to hear more music that I'm not familiar with. Because... I, I agree. And so whenever you want to come over and do a Chinese song recital, you're, you're the, it's an open invitation. Thank Whenever you so you're much. Ready. I'll be so happy to take take it and come to sing it. But I was just talk to Richard. I need to like you know do a lot of homework before you. It's a more homework for us. It's our responsibility to passing along this cultural, this poet, this emotion. It, we take it much longer time to prepare a project before present to the audience. However, on this like technology day, you know, from Zoom, from TikTok, from Facebook, it's always like, like fast. And my time of the preparation, the, the time I needed, not as fast as, you know, the new thing comes up. It, it just, I, I think something I, I we should probably all de develop together, find a way compromise, you know, we can present all kinds of music, but maybe slightly shorter preparation, but still with a good quality. Well, you have nine months. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, right? It's only 2021. <laughs> I know, <laughs> and we'll make sure to um, no, we'll make sure to have a, a pre-performance talk that just gives a quick rundown of everything. Because as universal as the music is, I think people always do, as an audience, want to have a working knowledge of what they're hearing, especially if it's new. And um, I don't know, maybe that maybe that's our challenge as artists now is that we can't take that for granted that we do have to even if it is Mozart, even if it is Beethoven, maybe if we take a little time to to explain who these people are and what their perspective is. like Because like um, we were talking about Schoenemüllerin, that you can sing it hundreds of times, you can play it hundreds of times, and you find something new every single time. And, you know, why not share that with an audience? Absolutely. I was talking with you before, it's like about... Uh, when we were young artists in Chicago, we had the pre-talk about the show on the opening nights. And because like in the States, our companies try to produce the opera more traditional way. If it's, you know, the grand operas, we try to do as original as it can be. And since I moved to Germany, we have many, they open a huge window, like the possibilities an opera can be due. So it's a huge benefit if you go this to this pre-talk every show otherwise it can be very frustrating i have to say but for us if we do if we're singers we give up the makeup time we go to talk these pre-talk shows ourselves you know do you think it will be possible to help the audience more as we are the street performers i think so i think so because um i i said this on the show before i love like I said, doing music that is unfamiliar because I, I like learning for myself, but I also like educating audiences. And I think it is incumbent on us to offer up that education just a little bit to audience. Like even if it's not giving you the full perspective, I think it is important that where we are today, that it is our duty as performers, not just to convey the music, but to actually give some context. Absolutely. So, yeah. I Are saw you... a couple of recitals in China, like now, because, you know, not every concert hall has the ability to project translation, you know, in front of your chairs. And there are many singers doing the translation, they translate the entire thing in Chinese and mm -hmm. have a big projector right next to them. So they sing the song, they have the translation right here. Well, I, I like it, but also like limited a little bit as my Im imagination as an audience, because I see the entire text right away. And I didn't have enough space to the performer to let them develop. 
I get like it. It's it's a very fine line, like how you tell the story, how you prepare to the audience, and how how you present it. Yes, it's it's a fine line. We have we have. I'm during this like pandemic. I've been thinking a lot. How do I? How should I sing in the future for opera in songs? How to prepare them well and make my point still able to interpret the music correctly, not just being me. Yeah. Speaking of fine lines, we're getting to that point in the evening for you, where it must be getting close to dinner. I take you must eat dinner very early in Germany. Well, ish. I mean, it's like <laughs> it's only yes, five yes. o'clock. <laughs> Will, will you be yes. having some schnitzel tonight? Well, hopefully. I, I'm, I'm not a good cook. I like I like food. I like to eat, but I don't cook well. Not all Chinese are be cook. <laughs> <laughs> There's one stereotype out the window. Well, thank, thank you, Mingjie. Thank you for, for tearing. <laughs> you know, we tear down stereotypes here at the round table. <laughs> dispel. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's a good dispel. thing. <laughs> well, talking about stereotypes, it's like I had, I had a very like different kind of response when I try to sing like Western music, because like we do have exact same feelings in China as well, but we see it more in a metaphor way. We, we want, we would like to give you a hint and you get it Im- immediately. It's an ideal world. We place our all of something we're pursuing, something far we cannot touch like right away. And that is something special to, in our Chinese culture, but if you don't know this idea in advance to present to Western audience, people just confused what, what you're talking about. Even nowadays, Chinese don't speak that, like that way anymore. It's, it, it's this line is hard to cross, I think. And I think it's, uh, as you said, if there's a way to easily explain that before a performance or anything like that, even if it's not the full idea, just to give an audience an inkling a little bit it's just like okay it's it's a different way of thinking and i don't know just open your mind to that awesome absolutely absolutely well abe i mean um, have you yeah, got it, tiktok I, yet well we don't uh, no i i don't even know my this is this is just a piece of plastic it's not even a real phone <laughs> You're still done. it's a prop <laughs> yep it's a pure prop i'm um a luddite um this computer is not like this is a prop too it's not actually <laughs> i actually don't know who any of these people are here filming um in closing myra said wow all caps who wouldn't love that music after you perform it that way thank you thank you that's from our dear friend and, and new advisory board member myra huang um so it looks like you have you're you're just like one of the most gifted people um in town in stuttgart so we want to get you to um, back don't here. say that don't say that <laughs> <laughs> nope if we say it it's true so um, <laughs> uh, this is our t- this is our time now where we get really serious and we give shout outs do you know what that is no i didn't actually please don't explain. worry we just play the music again and you just say hi to whoever you want <laughs> <laughs> okay are well, you ready you gave me a chance to thank all the people like instructors i have in my on my whoever way whoever you would like to thank here we go so, so many people i'm really afraid to miss anyone <laughs> oh so, <laughs> too many all my voice teachers you know all the pianists i've been working with all of like people who gave me believing in the first place I don't know. I mean, for too many, too many of uh, of those people, inspired me in so many ways and have this support since like my first step to the U.S. I have been very fortunate. I don't want to miss any one single name because the list is too long. But I share my gratitude and this thing from very deep of my heart to all, everyone, all of us, all the audience, gave me this chance to express my culture, my music. And my personality i'm very thankful for being where i am now well we thank you for joining us and stay on the line because you're going to show me how to use tiktok now good night <laughs> everyone